This conference will now be recorded. Uh, that's uh, exactly that's kind of what this is for, right? And I now call the meeting of the Lovington City Commission to board. Janet, roll call. Here, Roberts. Here. Commissioner Gandy. Here. Commissioner Bowles. Here. Commissioner Trujillo. Here. Commissioner White. Here. Commissioner Bowles. Commissioner Bowles. Commissioner Bowles. Heavenly Father, we come to you asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin our meeting today. Help us engage in meaningful discussion, allow us to grow closer as a group, and nurture the bonds of our community. Thank you for the life-giving rain we received. Continue to fortify our sector, strengthen our first responders, guide our young, and bless this community. Oh, Lord, in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. To the black states of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. To salute the black a city of New Mexico, to see a symbol of our victory among the other cultures. Maybe see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're now moving to the agenda, but Patrick, if you'd like to start off. Uh, I just had one question, and that's on the closed session, the second that you brought in. Um, so we can go into closed session for a variety of reasons. One is to discuss limited personnel matters, and we can do that um, regarding the person that's in the treasury position. But as far as the treasurer position policy issues, um, so I wasn't sure what we were going to discuss on that. Is that what the qualifications are or whether the person's doing a good job, should be doing a better job or whatever. So I just thought we, because we can't go in the closed session to discuss, um, you know, what, let's say, for example, the qualifications of that position. That's a public policy issue that we've got to discuss it. So, uh, who added that? And the reason I brought that up is because I know Waddell said that he'd like to talk about it in closed session. Mm -hmm. I didn't know, so that's why I asked. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, Mr. Merrick, members of the commission, in closed session, I would like to discuss the position specifically on what she is, what is she working on? and what she plans to accomplish. Okay, so that's limited personnel matters, so yeah, we're, we're good to go. So I okay. just want to clarify. Okay. So no no correction is needed on that then? Or should we should we put a clarification on that? And let me see how three. So not not the position, it, I guess it would be Treasurer. Just treasurer and yeah. eliminate the right. position. We could do that or the minutes could reflect e either way. I don't <laughs> think it would be a bad idea to make a change and yes. just eliminate the word position. Um, I don't think it would change maybe what, what notice was given to the public as far as what they wanted to at least do a tenure and open session. So I think that would be safe also. Okay. Do you want to I can do that. Okay. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion. To approve the agenda with the correction of the word position removed from the limited personal personnel matters. Second. Okay. I have a motion and second. Uh, any discussion? Further correction? If not, Shannon, roll call, please. Commissioner Gandy? Yes. Commissioner White? Yes. Commissioner Bowles? Yes. Commissioner Yes. Yes. Commissioner Roberts? Yes. All right. The adoption of the minutes. Oh, open for a motion. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion for a consideration of the minutes June 27th, 2022. Oh, sure. okay. Motion and second on adoption of uh, minutes of June 27th. Any further discussion? 
If not, uh, Shannon, roll call. Commissioner Gabriel? Yes. Commissioner White? Yes. Commissioner Bandy? Yes. Commissioner Vogel? Yes. Mayor Roberts? Yes. All right, move to staff reports. Shannon, would you like to start? Yes, uh, Mayor and Commissioners, we do have a guest. I think we do today uh, with Bruce Incorporated. They're the ones that we have selected to help with our, uh, our health storm damage on the students. Okay. I don't think okay. they're Can here. here. Jason Hand. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll proceed with that. I'm sorry he's not here. Mm -hmm. but, uh... Okay. I, I did hear from um, Kay, Casey. She's with with our adjusters and she is still working on that report and she'll be emailing that to me <laughs> on the spreadsheet but she said that even though they're involved that she'll continue to deal with us more directly than with groups that's kind of where we're at any questions okay shannon and i will explain jason contacted me earlier today and uh, I didn't see him on the agenda okay. and I said I'm I said I just got back in town I don't know but in the meantime after speaking with him I went by and I spoke with Reed Insurance and because my question has been on the deductible now and you and I have kind of talked about that so uh, we did get clarification our deductible is a hundred thousand per Per building. So for a lot of these buildings, effectively we are self-insured as far as roof and hail. I mean roof, uh, sorry, uh, wind and hail, uh, which opens another problem in that I asked her if that was the case, why was not uh, at a, such a high deductible, why were roofs not basically excluded from the policy? She said, well, Travelers doesn't do it that way. And they what they do is just increase the deductible so it effectively it doesn't help and like in this instance. Now, and you can't exclude the roofs uh, from the policy. The problem with all of that is now with we haven't received the adjuster's report yet. So until we do, we're kind of at a standstill. But if they were to total all of our roofs, then that would put our policy at stake also because then those buildings are not insurable because the roofs are part of the building. Now, the I brought there, I have last year's um, full policy and then I have this year's uh, summary of the new policy and they are the same as far as the deductible. It is 1% or 100,000, whichever, um, with a minimum of 100,000. So the, on the list of buildings, the highest one we have is the police and fire department building across the street. And it's valued at about 3 point something million. So 1% of 3 point something million is about 30 something thousand. So if it was a 1%, that's what we'd be looking at a deductible, but it's 100,000. And that being the, the largest one, then our total for each building is gonna be the deductible. And there's 36 or so. So if we were to have to replace all of these roofs in order to be covered, we, we're gonna have two options. And that's one, eliminate the buildings from the insurance. Uh, or we might have to look uh, at a bid for doing each one individually. Um, we'll, I'm going to hold a little bit more discussion on that for a little bit later. But we, once we get that report, and I know we're waiting on that from them, then we will probably have to put together a plan on completion and our repair, whatever, in order to get these things non non-total. But that just kind of brings the commission up to end the staff up to date. Any questions? So you're telling me $100,000 per building? Yes, sir. 
per building. Or one person. No, it's whatever is the minimum. And we would have to have a $10 million building, single building, in order to be above the 100000 That or like. So we, at some point, I think we may have to address that because that wouldn't matter. I mean, that's, but umbrella only covered, basically is a liability issue. But, but I know what it does, it's just wind and hail. It's, it's kind of like a separate thing that, right. that on your policy, it's wind and hail. Correct. That's where it's affected the stiff. Overall, if it was a fire or something like that, it'd be different, but when it's wind and hail, it does bring up your premium or or, or your uh, deductible a hell of a lot higher. That's pretty much that's what I did. I was out of pocket a lot on my on my house because it's winning hand. It's a so separate pocket. That's what's affecting us. Correct. So effectively, in reality, I would say that they're probably not going to have. We're not going to have any monetary <coughs> relief from the insurance company. Um, because I feel the damage to each roof or to each building is going to be less than uh, the only one possibly to be across the street. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's going to come into play as we proceed through the agenda today. But we're going to have discussions on buildings that were affected in this matter. So anyway, we'll, we'll address some of that later. Anything further? All right, great. <clears throat> Uh, yes, commissioners and mayor. Um, I just want to let you guys know the finance department is working on um, getting the DFA report done. We're trying to close out June and we're putting everything in, posting everything, getting everything caught up on that. We are caught up on bank statements, thank goodness, but we're on June. And um, we have entered the budget into the system. You'll be getting the reports on that at the next commission meeting to be approved so we can send it to the state. And that's about all I have. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, I have nothing new to report, but I'd be happy to stand for any questions. I don't have a question, but I have a statement. Uh, one of the cleanup facilities where we have dropped off a dumpster, the neighbor caught me recently last weekend and told me that they greatly appreciate it because it was a burned out mobile home and effectively it's gone and they were very appreciative of your efforts in that area. So wanted you to know that. Thanks, sir. <clears throat> uh, yes. Chief, do you have an update on your $70,000 project? Oh, sorry. The fence project? Yes, sir. Yes, we are waiting for zoning and planning to pass uh, an encroachment uh, measure we have to do because of the fence line. But other than that, there we have everything ready to go. The materials have been ordered. So as soon as we get that passed tomorrow, we start this week. So it has to go through planning and zoning and then to go and then burning sure. first. So it wouldn't be able to start to look after last so week. Next week. Mm -hmm. Good. 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 Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, Mr. I've seen at the uh, the police department uh, at a you're welcome to the proper work. The major uh, investigation comes through that you were able to get a bunch of uh, we articles off the streets. Proactive patrolling mm -hmm. um, and good police work. We intercepted a vehicle, suspicious suspicious vehicle at five o'clock in the morning, by where it shouldn't have been, and that led to a search warrant of the vehicle and recovered. Approximately 100 fentanyl pills, methamphetamine, a gun. Um, so we're not able to release the names of the people involved because it's an ongoing investigation. But I think the most important thing is we got 100 fentanyl pills off the street. Each one of those can be deadly just by itself. So and that was just our patrol guys doing their, their daily job. Great job. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Okay. okay. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Commission, so all I've got is the quarterly numbers from our last quarter. We had a total of 625 EMS calls, 141 interfacility transfers, 30 airport transfers, 
192 refusal cancels or DOAs, um, 22 tatum calls, and 98 fire calls. And we had just July 3rd, 4th, and 5th, we had eight fire calls from fireworks in the city limits. And one of them did burn part of a, a storage building, but we caught it before it could actually do much damage. It just done some damage on the outside of the building. Um, I do have some pictures for the next commission meeting that shows what's still out there, fires that we've had that could have been even worse due to the fireworks and stuff. But other than that, I will start any questions. In your recruitment, how's it going? So we are in the process of hiring three new employees. They do their DOT physical and drug and alcohol on Wednesday. Well, two of them do. One of them will not be 18 until August the 2nd. So they all have gone through a fire academy. So they all are all fire one, fire two certified. The two that do their testing on Wednesday. If everything comes back in time, one of them will start the 18th and work the 18th, 19th. The other one will come on the 20th and 21st. And then the 18 or 17 year old will be 18 on the second. We're going to try to get all his stuff complete before he turns 18. That way, on the third, he will actually start his shift. Good to hear. Thanks, sir. And one of them that's starting, the one that's starting on the 18th, if he passes his national registry, he will also be an EMT intermediate. So that's that's a big help. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Ball? Um, yeah, I'd like to. Uh, See that I don't know if it's, uh, I should say, with a bang or without a bang, but the 4th of July I went past and uh, the party in the park was good, good turnout, heard a lot of good things about it. Uh, citizens in my area, uh, a little quieter this year. So I don't know if it was with the uh, fireworks sales or what it was, but it was an uh, actual not bad evening. Looking forward to more events coming up. Looking forward to uh, the Lee County Fair Rodeo coming up. So I see we got a bunch of good things coming up. Again, I'm going to say, eat local, shop local, get out there and help our businesses, help our community. But I'd like to just thank everybody for being a part of the community and helping out and volunteering and doing what we can. To Make Lovington a good place to live. Thank you all. Commissioner Keene? I'm good. Thank you. Commissioner Keene? Nothing this evening. Say Nothing tonight, sir. Uh, Dr. Martin? Mr. Mayor, members of the Commission, uh, the annual municipal conference is coming up at the end of, of August. So if any of the commissioners are interested in that, please meet with Jaylene so that she can start that registration process. And that will be at the end of August. Beginning of September, it's a four-day event, and it will be in Albuquerque at the convention center. Uh, other than that, I stand for any questions that the mayor, commission, have. Excellent. So, you got off the hook, <laughs> Ms. Bob. Uh, mayor, commissioners, I have a little yeah. map for you. Uh, we had uh, the last meeting. You had asked. Uh, Mr. Bolt had asked about uh, getting signs posted out on the at 17th for the bypass. I uh, did get a quote, it's on that second page uh, for our street department to put those signs in. That's what it cost us to order those signs. I did talk to the county, that area of the road is ours to, to sign the drama and take care of. So um, just wanted to know if you wanted us to go ahead with those in that area or not. And it doesn't have to be a resident. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, I, I didn't think that. that no, we don't have a resolution. Never mind. Just wanted you guys to be aware of the cost. And, and what size are the signs, Crystal? Uh, 
<laughs> There'll be the larger, like what's on uh, Main Street as you're headed, you know, that says the truck bypass out there. They won't be quite that size. They'll be about half of that. I think they're going to be a, a four by eight. You know, just saying, I think they'd be beneficial for people not from the area. Right on the five by five by six. Five by six. Okay. I think it'd be beneficial for having signage up there. Mm -hmm. And we would have one posted going uh, towards gum and then one more towards 17. So there'd be two, two, <clears throat> two signs. That could give them It's been brought to my attention a few mm -hmm. times. Yeah. We can get that thing here. Yeah. I'd be Yes, I have a city manager. Thank you very much. Uh, NMDOT, as you know, they're also working on Avenue D. Which was the rain, they had a whole day of pumping water out of their holes. But they're still working on the canal, and uh, they are getting some storm drain in. Um, and they're having to, there's quite a few manholes in that area that they're having to work on. Um, I know the canal, they're waiting for rebar, uh, it's back orders. I'm still waiting for that to come in, but um, they should be moving along. And our water department got our, uh, we had to replace the two inch line over in that area for Harbire and for GWC. And so they've been working to get that completed. Any questions? Crystal, um, on the planning and zoning, have you scheduled a meeting or anything like that? Or I don't know if that's in your ball. Yes, we have a meeting tomorrow night at four o'clock. Okay, uh, in reference to the outside the extraterritorial zoning part, uh, we haven't had a meeting yet because it's been canceled. But I know the board wanted to talk, uh, have a meeting with the city board uh, prior to us making any further future decisions. I don't know if the, you're aware of that. The authority wanted to have a meeting with the, yeah, the, uh, the zoning board. Yeah, the big county. DC. Yeah, and I thought that was brought, and it might have been missed somewhere. Nobody has brought it to my attention. Because, uh, because uh, I, me and Jenny have to schedule those ETZ commission meetings that appear. Yeah, and what the objective was for us, both parties to be on the same page mm -hmm. when making decisions, and I think we're not, uh, oh, well, the board okay. feel, feels like they're not. And so on our last meeting, the Commissioner Ganey was there as well. Uh, we wanted to have that meeting, that way everybody's on the same page uh, prior to moving forward with any more meetings with the county. Okay, I'll get with Bruce and we'll get something arranged on that. Thank you. Anyone else? Patrick? I did get a response back from Walker. I believe they try to get somebody out of the table within that crossing. I, I asked if they'd give me the date, you know, so I can meet them out there. I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but it looks like it's higher up on their way. So. Let me ask you, Patrick, are they going to look at the one in? Main Street. I didn't, also, I didn't bring that to their attention. I just brought that. Yeah, okay. okay. But I can add that to the list because I know southbound, the slow lane is, is pretty rough. Mm -hmm. Yes. I figure if you got their ear and they're out here, <laughs> yeah. it'd be beneficial to show them. Yeah, that one, um, probably what I would do, I'll, I'll see if I can't contact them as well. well because I think being a state highway instead of a city street, right. they may have a little bit more stroke to, to have that repaired. But you'd so. be surprised that, uh, since he's driving over here to see this project, probably twice a week he would see that at least, I'm talking about DOT, because that is yeah. a state highway, he would say, he would reach out to have them repaired. So he'd be surprised. And they may have. Yeah. All right. I don't, I don't, I'm not saying that they have, but certainly add that to just see what well, I appreciate it, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you. And I don't have anything new, but I'd be happy to see some questions if there are. Yes, all right. All right. Um, actually, I'm going to take a moment. Uh, three months ago today, I I actually sat down in a chair, so I'm going to kind of give you a state of the city uh, address, I guess. And um, a friend of mine a few days ago told me that I'd been a little negative up here, and I would like to apologize to the citizens of Lovington if I, if I came off as negative because uh, I want to say that if I did, it was because of frustration. Frustration comes from expectations not being met. So 
I did some soul searching and evaluation and I said, well, the problem with the expectations, if you don't let people know what your expectations are, then you're probably going to be frustrated. So in, in that mindset, I, I moved forward and uh, I thought, if you know, in order to bring to light expectations, then you need to communicate. So tonight, uh, over the past week, we were actually out of town this week, and I took a, took a few moments to put together, and I passed out to staff and commission up here. There is a list of concerns and deadlines that have, that have either been brought up uh, in staff meetings, department meetings, here at these meetings, or from citizens of Lovington, both by email, by phone call, or whatever. And I've compiled a list, and this is a starting list. It is by no means comprehensive of everything. And I encourage the commissioners to, to in the next couple of weeks or whatever, uh, to uh, add to the list to uh, some of these some of the deadlines, some of the concerns are already in progress as far as uh, solutions being um, completed, but added to it, and at the same time, I, uh, I would like to, uh, if there are no objections, have this list added to the minutes of tonight's meeting so that it can become a public record and we can start an accountability because if if you don't understand how it is, we're accountable to you guys. We're a, we represent you in five different districts, and so you can't hold us accountable if you if we all don't know what we should be accountable for. So I know that pretty much anyone that's here has been frustrated with the city at some point. I know I have. So we're going to start this. And we're going to be updating this as we proceed. We're going to be adding to and deleting as things are accomplished, hopefully, and then continue this so that we can see progress that happens in the city. And we can see that the things that are on everybody's mind, and if you don't, if they're not on there, then it's a simple phone call uh, to your either your commissioner, to myself, to the city or whatever, and then we can address it, and we will add it, and we will try to bring everything. Now, in no way on any of this is it prioritized as to uh, importance or less importance. It is simply, to the best of my recollection, what has been brought to me. So with that, uh, I hope to, uh, through all of this process, uh, I want to state that I love Lovington, and uh, I want to see the city progress. And it, this is my attempt at trying to help the whole situation. It is not the solution, but at least it's a start. And so we will be adding to and modifying from this. And with that, I'll stand for any questions, both public and are from the staff and commission. Um, if you, I know you didn't get a copy if you're sitting out there. We didn't know how many. So once it, once the minutes are, uh, are put on the website, it will be there so you can then look and uh, see the list, and then you will see as we go along. Any, all right. Other than that, we will move on. We are just pushing. Oh, I'm sorry. And another item, uh, Jaylene, I'd like to. Have a discussion I can put on the next meeting and then that week as, as the commissioner wife just asked that we add it to it now let's use that discussion trying to add to also to the department heads that will give you a time to look at what is on there maybe have a little response to things that are already in progress and maybe uh, just give a little bit more input at that time so it, it's an open situation and uh, please like I said it's not complete if, if we want to add things that would be great I do encourage everyone to, uh, to put this so that we can show the progress that we are making 
All right. Now move to public comment. Uh, okay. <laughs> I had to scream back here. What <laughs> else? Please, please tell everybody. All right. Public comment. We encourage public comment. Uh, we try to limit it to three minutes. Oh. I, I, I say try. Sometimes I don't. Uh, but uh, I, everyone's welcome to come up. Please, it's uh, you can stay. You can whatever you can ask. Anybody has any questions? And of course, if we do, we will. So, go ahead. State your name first, and then proceed. Ian Kimbrough. Okay. Um, good evening. Mayor, commissioners, um, a few days ago, my phone started going off with some different text messages and stuff from different people, and I'm sure a lot of y'all and people in the community got the same text message. And what it was regarding was, um, we all know what's going on in the world right now in the United States, but with Roe versus Wade being gone and Texas laws, changing the way they have they have shut down all of their abortion clinics and there was an emergency meeting called from the lee county right to life saturday night and it was attended by over well over 100 people of a lot of elected officials and different people that this is a big concern for us for lee county because if you will get on facebook and search women's whole health, they have targeted Lee County. This is not something happening in Dallas, Texas, or Washington, D.C., or Santa Fe. They are looking at Lee County. And it says, we're moving to New Mexico. And they have pinpoints from their abortion clinics in Texas that are being closed down with little cars driving to Lee County. And Lovington is specifically pinpointed. The impact that this would cause on our community is unspeakable. And there is some things in progress going forward right now to help the cities of Lee County and Lee County to make this where they cannot move into our communities. We do not want to be known as the abortion capital of the Southwest. Virtually every state in the South, Alabama, Louisiana, all these different places have restricted their abortion laws. They will be flying people into this community. They will be busing busloads of women into this community to kill women and children. This is not a nightmare that you wake up from. It's happening today. If you question that, anybody can Google women's whole health and see that they have started a GoFundMe page. They're trying to collect money for people to donate to help them to move to Lee County. And they have targeted Lee County. And as of now, they have raised over $220,000. I don't think this is something that the EDC wanted to see move into this county. This would open a nightmare for us, for our water systems. You cannot believe the horrific nightmares that this will cause for us. The liabilities on our hospitals, on our hotels, the people that leave those abortion clinics are not leaving there in good health. They just had a surgical procedure and sent out the door. They're hemorrhaging. All of these horrific nightmares that you see will be here. <laughs> and you guys can stop it. And it's going to fall on the five of y'all to stop it in Lebanon. The community, I can promise you, will be behind you. We are in that process now. Um, but this is not something that anybody in this county is going to be able to sit on the sideline and say, it doesn't affect me. It does. And it will. And if we don't stand up and if the five commissioners don't vote when they need to, when we get these ordinances put into place, if you don't vote against it, 
you're voting for the murder of all these children. And I don't know how else to put it. Sounds cold, it is. That is our reality today. Not something I ever thought that I would have to stand up here and say that was going to happen in Lovington, New Mexico, but it is. And I cannot say how hard this has been. <clears throat> I think we as Christians have to stand up. We said a prayer before. We have to stand up. We have to take care of our community. And we have to take care of our neighbors. And those babies are our neighbors. If anybody has any questions, I will be glad. Anybody have any comments? Yeah, and I, I will say I have attended uh, two meetings on this, and uh, my stance is simply this. We don't want it here. No. No more than we want uh, anything else that is of value and a life, uh, an ethics, and all of that. And while, and I've stated this, and I will state it publicly, I'm not going to stand on the pro-choice or the pro-life side. I'm not going to say that. I'm just going to say that if there is a need for this for a facility like this, then it just doesn't need to be here. I'm going to pull the old knot in my backyard. So I'm going. They they will be putting together an ordinance uh, drafted from their their uh, experience in Texas and Nebraska and Ohio, Louisiana and several other states and they will be presenting it and I've already basically briefed Patrick that when it comes we will have to uh, evaluate a path that we would have to take in order to try to stop this and um, anyway so we're we're still a little time away but I appreciate you know, it's not too far away. We're two to four weeks away. And I will, you know, I'm not to interrupt you, Mayor, but no, um, once they establish a business here, the act of getting them out is not impossible, but it's a lot harder. If we can be proactive in preventing these people from coming into our city, for this reason, it will be so much better than us having to fight after the nightmares that it brings here to get them out. It will be a legal battle that we, it would be awful. This, if we're proactive about it and we stop them going in and we can do that, and we're gonna give you a, a path to do that with, that will protect the city from being sued. We will have representation. We will have all of these things in line. But what we need you five to do is to vote to, to pass this ordinance when it's presented. So I'm asking you to pray about it, to take it to your heart, you know, talk to your families, look at your children, and really to see if this is what we want Lovington to be. Because it will be a major hub if we don't stop it. Um, Commissioner Jackson is gonna is gonna push it forward with the county. Tatum is doing the same thing. Um, you're gonna see virtually every city in Lee County. We would like to be the leader. We would like for Lovington to be the one to say, this will not happen here. We would like to be the first one in Lee County to say that. That we will not tolerate that in our community. I don't want to go into details, but in some of the meetings that we've been in, um, it, it gets very graphic. We do not have the disposal for body parts, for baby body parts in this place. 
and you're looking at baby body parts going through our water system. Now, I'm not exaggerating, and I'm not being dramatic. This is what it is. And I, for one, could not put my head down at night, not knowing that I have not done everything humanly possible to stop this in our yard, in our city. So I ask every one of y'all, like I said, to take this to heart, think about it, pray about it. I know you're all Christians. We all have to get up and look at ourselves in the mirror. This is one of the things where we can make a huge difference. And I'm asking you to be a part of it. Thank you, Dean. Thank you for your time. My last statement on that issue is uh, Lubbock has adopted this ordinance and they actually proceeded. Uh, Planned Parenthood uh, is no longer operating. Uh, that's not the right word, but no longer performing in Lubbock, Texas. So it gives you an idea of where we're at. Representative. <coughs> Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Thank you for the opportunity to speak in front of you. I'm going to try not to go everything that was just said. I appreciate the fact that we live in a town, in a county, in a state, in a country where we still open up to the park. I appreciate your prayer to the Commissioner. So, as we go through, as we think about things that, and move forward, think about things from a faith standpoint, think about things from a holistic and an altruistic standpoint, would be the way that I ask you to look at what's coming forward here, because it scares the hell out of me. And, and I said up there, and a lot of things scare the hell out of me, this, brings a certain level of fear. And so in my, uh, I wrote a letter and I published it and put it up there after the election. And it quotes a, a gentleman by the name of John Stuart Mill. And it says, let not anyone by his conscience, conscience by the delusion that he can do no harm if he takes no part and forms no opinion. There will become a time within the next month or so that there is a part and an opinion that the five of you have to make. You guys all watched my primary election. We all know that Votes have consequences. People are going to question this all the time. Happened in my election, happened in a whole bunch of elections across this, this county, this state, and this country. So, I want to be crystal clear where, as a state representative, Randy Pettigrew for District 61, who represents two thirds of Lovington, stands on this. I voted against Senate Bill 10, which we moved the law to uh, decriminalize abortions in the state. Also, I want to be clear that we still have statutes on the state. On our, we have state statutes that make partial birth abortions illegal. We can talk about Roe versus Wade, and we can have these conversations. Outside of this, from 1973, we can talk about Casey versus Planned Parenthood in 1992, and we can talk about the Dodd case that just happened. We can have those conversations. We can talk about viability. We can talk about where we need to go as a state. But right now, this is a decision that can happen locally that you can control. The question is, is do we want to be that kind of hater? Is that something that you can sleep with? Something I can't sleep with, something I will speak out against. I'm speaking out against tonight. 
need you to know that I support everything and I will stand in front of you, not behind you, when it comes time to vote. That's all I can do for you. From this standpoint, I will continue to fight in South Bay. God bless you. I appreciate each and every one of you. What you do is not easy. The stress that comes with the job that you have, that our law enforcement has, that our fire department has, just everybody. The stress here is enough. I pray for each of you by name daily. I want you to know that. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Justin Munoz, and I'm here representing LYS. We're a new uh, organization in town, and we are organizing all the local youth sports under one ban. Um, we've had meetings with Dr. Martinez um, with our efforts, and we're trying to collaborate with the city as much as possible. And mostly I'm just here to extend some gratitude for the Parks and Rec Department that helped with the softball. Um, we had a great turnout. It was a good season. They helped us out through and through. It was a great success. We haven't heard anything overly negative about our performance hosting softball. And um, just, you know, letting them know that as far as esports go, we're trying to commit ourselves with working with every organization that we can to make sure that children have something to do we sharpen the moral pencil only using sports and we're reaching out to every organization that's kind of uh, We have two members from the key club here. They were helping with the concession stand all season long, just doing a phenomenal job. I said the parks and rec. And no complaints. We're keeping the facilities clean as possible, taking care of everything. So, you know, it's some place that we can be proud of. And uh, recently, Edith Taylor has been in here a few times, you may know our vice president, <clears throat> slightly outspoken, lots of energy. We love it. And so she has drummed up uh, with the Maddox Foundation, uh, David Reed, working with them to get grant funding for that facility. And we're trying to, like I said, help where we can, you know, let us be your hands out there, building the facility, um, getting everything you need lined out for it. And I said, working with a doctor to help that 100 grand spend what we needed so our children can enjoy a good facility so we can be proud of And we just kind of want that to echo with other communities, even Hobbs, Artesia, you know, we want to say that we're from Lovington and we should see the things that we have for our children and how we develop them. And it's a great tool for them, you know, to use. So as far as uh, LYS is concerned, Thank you um, for giving us a chance to work with y'all. And we look forward to uh, working with Dr. Martinez in the future. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, my name is Christina Ramon. I, I guess I have a statement to make. Um, something that's been a, a heavy on my heart for a while um, over the last few years. and. Uh, I'll just, I'll just start. Um, I'd like to congratulate uh, Robbie Roberts and Liz White on their um, positions. I believe uh, that you will bring some fresh perspectives, uh, new ideas and principles, <clears throat> and bring improvement and success to the city of Lovington. Um, I believe that having Mr. Roberts in the mayor's position is going to set us up for um, strongly needed change and uh, desires to our city. What proceeds in my public comment is not even close to half of all the things I would like to say or have addressed by the commissioners, more so the tenured commissioners and management. Hopefully in time, I will get a chance to talk to you more about my concerns and feelings with what has occurred in the past few years. Tonight, my biggest concern as a lifelong citizen of the city is your 2021 audit. While I may not understand a majority of how government accounting works, I do have a decent understanding of regular accounting and the importance of having the accurate record. Audits can be scary and overwhelming, but I find it even more scary that some of those findings are recurring items. 
You have two items that still haven't been resolved from your 2019 audit and one from 2015 um, that was recently resolved. I understand that you had an unusual amount of turnover in the finance area and your upper management. I understand that these unresolved issues will take some time to fix, um, but I do feel that those findings are inexcusable. Those issues uh, shouldn't have, should not have happened in the first place um, had there been better internal controls. And if people had been held level for their omissions, their lies, or whatever else you would like to call their gross negligence. Um, and if you ask me, it sounds like fraudulent activity. Reading through the findings was extremely concerning and infuriating. We the people of this community elected you to carry out your duties in the best interest of this town. The auditor's findings have shown us that you have failed in some of those duties and continue to do so. Too many people lost their jobs and frankly, the wrong people lost their jobs. Those who were able to hold on to their employment took harsh pay cuts and held on as long as they could until another opportunity arose for them. All of this was in, spot, in response to your decisions and mistakes. I would like to know why uh, those people in those positions are not being held accountable. Why was there no investigation into the former city manager, uh, city manager and the finance director? Were those gentlemen not the ones who were responsible for the missing capital assets? your questionable journal entries, your slack cash management accounts, and your dubious accounts, or adjustments to customer water accounts. I feel you owe it to this community to hold those parties accountable to have put the city in such bad shape. I feel you owe it to this community to do better and to question what you do not understand and to educate yourself <clears throat> on what you do not know, especially when it comes to the finance. If it was your personal finance, I bet you would be asking a lot more questions <clears throat> and dealing with things a lot more harshly. I feel you owe it to the two newest commissioners to give them a fair chance and to offer assistance rather than resistance when it comes to resolving the many issues and uh, complications that you face together. That's all I have. If you guys would like to direct any favor towards me. Ms. Rowan, uh, first of all, thank you for uh, your opening remarks. And to those present, I assure you, I didn't pay her. Just okay. say that. I, I was like, oh my God, it really looked really awkward. Yeah. Um, all of the items that you have presented are, uh, a lot of them are on the list that I distributed tonight. And um, there, it is my uh, desire <laughs> to come up with uh, answers to a lot of it and uh, there are certain things that have proved to be difficult to come to con conclusions at this time uh, and uh, I it has been my stance to not go to not look back and put point blame and uh, while I appreciate your remarks a lot I want to make sure that we move forward and during our uh, ability to maybe come up with all of the answers and not, I did not, when I started this, assume that anyone had done any wrongdoing. And that is the stance that I'm still holding. I think that I, there were a lot of uh, situations and uh, circumstances that created this and my goal is no matter what is to correct those and get on a path where we can be transparent where we can be actual in our numbers and we can define where um, each dollar of public funds is spent and hopefully show the good that comes from it so uh, hopefully that answer it doesn't answer your, your questions but it shows that we're going to be moving in that direction and that is my goal and uh, and we and I appreciate your comments and the best thing that's going to happen is uh, loving to move forward and we get better every day and that is what I would like to say but yes sir one other thing if I can add <laughs> actually after um, we got our new finance director at that time and, and I guess the best way to characterize it was sort of dumped in our lap is without the city manager and without our uh, 
former finance director. Um, staff did get together, and former mayor Trujillo and I did get in touch with uh, the state auditor. Spoke to them directly a couple of times, and so part of the issues that were addressed were brought to the state auditor's attention. And I think that I, I don't know if they're investigating it or what the status is, but my understanding is that's still ongoing. So I don't think it was a situation where uh, individuals that were left here in the city to deal with some of these issues just didn't didn't address or bring it to anybody's attention. So I'll follow up with the commission wants and see what the status is and maybe the state auditor can kind of give us an update. But part of that was not just looking at what had gone wrong and were there problems and who was responsible. I think the initial reaction was to apply direct pressure to stop the bleeding, so to speak. And so that took a lot of time, a lot of attention, but it was brought to the state auditor's attention. And I know I've been in conversations with the state auditor at least twice, and so as a former mayor and some staff, so it was addressed. <laughs> I can't tell you what the status is now, but some of that was addressed. Obviously not before our findings of the last audit, but where we were left. So. That and that took place two weeks after uh, the resolutions of both individuals. And what our findings were, we we addressed that too. Put in their hands because that's above our feet. You know, paper. Right. So I, they, they, they wanted to investigate. Mm -hmm. it, and I think it was certainly better to have a third person. You know, rather than me. Yeah, we have to have a auditor take a look at that rather than the individuals here. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> All right, we will now be moving on to non action items. Um, I presented the, the one that's on there, and this came about from, uh, I'm sure that each of the commissioners and myself uh, received an email, uh, and the, even though it says city properties, I'm primarily talking about the Troy Harris Center, because there's been emails that uh, requested consideration of use uh, of mod issues here. I didn't see her. Uh, she has brought, or she has basically said that there are other entities that are interested in the Troy Harris Center. Uh, in a discussion that I had, just a brief discussion with a real, realtor here in, in Lovington. And just as a side note in, in the discussion, we mentioned the Troy Harris, and he said if it were to be uh, available for purchase, he would have a uh, a contract in our hands by the end of the week. So, uh, my question to the commission is, are we open to the idea of either the sale or lease of this? I meant to contact the EDC to see what the situation with the uh, solar project, I, it was stated to me that they wanted to lease it for a certain number, I believe a five-year lease, um, and this is, so what is our stance on it? Where do we want to go with it? Do we want to table it? And as I stated earlier, also it is a building that was impacted by the hail storm, and so whatever our stance or our progression on this is, then we will have to look at the roof situation and any damage that was caused from the hell storm. I know there is damage, uh, but uh, uh, I'm open for comments, discussion on this. I didn't this. get that email, so I didn't know we were talking about You didn't get that email? Yeah. Oh, I, thought, I really thought they went to all commissioners, and you kind of, from your statement the other day, I just assumed you got the one on, huh? on Troy Harris being a daycare. No, someone oh. has to just wouldn't because we're homing a few other people. They're like, what if we offered a service to the city? <laughs> Could we be homed? No, it was just purely. Um, 
I think, um, depending on what, what goes in there, but uh, prior prior to, um, during, during my mayorship, I had reached out to the Maddox Foundation to see if we can mimic uh, what was done in the with the Boys and Girls Club. And um, we were in contact to the to, to YouTube uh, Mayor Rockers. And uh, I don't know where it's where it's gone from that point, but I know that there was a lot of inspections done and so forth, and it was going to be feasible for them to take it over as boys and club, girls club because I wanted to keep it as a youth center for the children of Lovington because I don't think we can replace that. Uh, I, I don't in value. There's no way it'd be a four million dollar is four million dollars plus to replace that building and how can we utilize it so uh due to the financial situation i reached out to them see if there was any way we could mimic what they placed what they helped put in place in hops so i reached out to uh david reed with the Maddox foundation and uh we got together and we got to talking and and they did a lot of uh looking into it and so forth but i don't know where it come to when i when I left the seat. So uh, I, I, I felt that was on the youth center. Yeah, that was on the youth center. Yes. Okay, yeah, and yeah. we're going to be discussing that okay. in closed session. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. My primary question is on do we want to take proposals, and that would be you know up to the commission, but we want to either offer to receive proposals on the Troy Harris Center, and, or do we want to continue? <laughs> as we all know, right now it's Mothballed, if that's correct. What is it? I have an update. Oh, Evelyn, she, she couldn't be here, but she okay, should. good. Thank you. Said that on uh, the solar project, they're doing soil testing and studies right now. They're about eight months out, and they've secured funding in the amount of three hundred forty-six million, and they're in the in the beginning stages for the solar company that's going to go in. So just let you guys know, she just wanted me to pass that word along. I would say about leasing it. Yeah. Yeah, I think right now before we decide to sell it, right. it's just the value of the properties. Yeah. I would look at leasing it because uh, um, for five year lease would be nice uh, because for us to replace the buildings in the millions and, and maybe we can renovate it for ourselves no. with no argument. Money, you know? So just a uh, question, why would you replace it? Why, why would I replace it? Yeah, just, just out of curiosity. No, I'm just saying because for instance, that building would be like a spare building of the great building consider what we got across here with the London PD. For instance, that one looks like most of jailhouse if you ever walked in it. Uh, versus something nicer like the Troy Harrison upgrading it to house the London DPD. We would have an option. Uh, leaving that option open would be nice other than seeking out five, six million dollar funding to, to build a brand new building versus a million dollars to renovate one. But you're fixing to have another building empty that's a didn't build. Yeah. But that one is, I'd rather sell that one now. That one I would sell because <laughs> that has so much uh, dividers in it there that it's really just not, it's just an office building is what it is, not like the Troy Harris. So if that one ends up for, if we ever make that. But the out. biggest issue with the Troy Harris Center has always been the electric bill. But I think we found a solution. We found a problem to that, and that was because everything was bended out through. I understand, the, but we didn't yeah. fix it. We just yeah. found the problem and mothballed it. Yeah. So your question, your question would be: Would it be better to bring the three departments that moved out of there back into there? No. So we're going to have an empty building to, to lease out, if possible, lease. But can you get can you get current rates for a building that size? But you can always lease. And then improvements go back to us without uh, when they when they lease in. Because if, well, if they have a big electric bill, hell, they're going to make improvements mm -hmm. to their to, to bring down the cost. Uh, and so whatever they renovate, uh, it's just like anything else. It it, it it goes back to us. So if they improve it by half a million, that's an, that's something we didn't have to do. So that's yeah. why I would I would be in favor of leasing. <laughs> The only issue with selling it, you don't have control of it. You know, do we need control, control of it? Well, the question would be is what's your vision for the city? Exactly. And does that apply to where exactly. you want to go with the city? Because that's what that's where we're at with the, the theater. You have an issue, we had a we had a goal, we had a vision, we had a you know a path we we're gonna go. 
And then we have a couple of rough spots and different things have changed. So the question is, does that still fit in the path we're wanting to take? You know, or does the city need to unload a couple of buildings because apparently the cost of roofing these is going to be astronomical. So is now the time to unload some stuff at a reduced rate to save the roofing bill? And, and that's property. So we're not talking about everything, like have listed the ones that we have instead of just no. here and there. Right. And, and it's, uh, if we're open general. to proposals for lease or purchase, I would say that we enter. If people are just wondering, is there a plan for it? Obviously, we don't have a concrete plan for it. So then we can open the, the uh, discussion for proposals. They can come up, they can make their case, whether it's a lease, whether it's a, uh, a purchase, whether whatever it is. And then uh, we can consider those um, and then go from there. I have spoke to Mana. Hers were private enterprise. And so I said, you know, since they're not uh, a, a government entity, then if we open it for purchase, then we have to open it to everybody for a purchase. Um, proposals for lease, I mean, we, we can put deadlines, uh, if, if there's anybody that, and the EDC can reach out to them and see if they're ready to go. It's just, a, you know, I've gotten several inquiries and then compounded by our current situation. So, um, we, you know, we can just say we're open to right now anything, and then once uh, we get something that we think would be um, a consideration, we kind of narrow down what our proposal, I mean, what our plan would be, whether to lease or purchase, and then we'll take the appropriate steps. So, I think one thing to consider, and I, and I don't know if it's applicable on this part, but our bond rating would that affect our bond rating because it affects the value of, of the city. Uh, and that's why I wonder if it would affect our bond rating. If that was the case, I'd be scared that the uh, effect of the hail storm is going to affect our bond rating a lot worse than. Well, that's, what I'm, saying. Have, yeah. well, that's what I'm saying. That's something we need to look into because it does affect our bond rating. I mean, something we need to look at would that affect our bond rating, uh, relieving me? couple of million dollars worth of assets, would that affect our ability to borrow? Because now the city's not as worth as more as much as it was yesterday. I understand. Totally. And this, uh, basically, I think this is something that will probably go on to our current uh, uh, concern list and uh, we'll proceed forward. And again, this wasn't the Troy Harris was an obvious choice because there's been a lot of uh, talk about it, but we have other buildings as stated, the magistrate court, the current magistrate court building, the Denton building is going to come available. There's uh, the theater, which we're going to discuss later. The active, uh, the youth center uh, is going to be later. And uh, there's just going to be several of these um, talk that we're going to have to do something with one way or the other, secure um, or repair or eliminate one of the two. So, so uh, basically, we will entertain options. And with that, any questions? I'll also open that up to the public. It's, a, it's just a discussion now if anybody has any questions. If not, we'll move on. You know what? Do we really need to borrow any more money? Does this city really need to go any further in debt? And dear God, have we not learned that if we can't pay for it, we don't need it? <laughs> but you have current ones going on. Well, we need to pay those off. No one. We need to get all every. We need to get this city out of debt. We need to get us back in the green, and we need to never borrow money again. We need to put ourselves back in the position to where we can pay for what we want. We don't need more six million dollar fire stations that's not being used. We don't need a six million dollar police station that will sit there on Main Street. 
We can't do that anymore. And I think I speak for everybody I've ever talked to in Lexington. I believe every citizen in Lexington feels the same way. We're tired of it. We want responsible spending. Please. All right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We will now move on to Anthony Adams. Thank you, Mr. Um, I hope the floor of the bar. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion for resolution 2022-071, approval of JF Maddox Foundation grant contract. Sure. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Mr. Reed, would you like to discuss that? Yes. I'm going to speak really loud, so hopefully you guys can hear me. My name is David Reed. I'm with the JF Maddox Foundation. If you do not know with the JF Maddox Foundation, we're a private family foundation based here in Lee County. And we invest in the quality of life here in Lee County. We do that by investing in education, community uh, development, and social services. We have recently been having some conversation where I'm here to have a conversation about this grant opportunity. Uh, this is a grant that we are looking to award to the city. I've been having some conversations with Dr. Martinez and with staff members and with commission members. And we are very proud of what you guys are doing. We're very proud of the leadership. You guys are making some big strides moving forward and really changing the way that the city has been operating. We think you're standing on the shoulders of giants that have come before also. You're all kind of working together and improving the city. We're proud of that. Because of that, we're able to align with you guys in a lot of ways. And we're excited about that opportunity. When we worked with Dr. Martinez, he connected with not only staff members, but people in the community, just like you guys, uh, to work with and identify what some of the needs are in the community. So. What we've done here is come up with a grant package that we think meets those needs, some of those needs. First, we are offering $100,000 to fund improvements to Harold Mundell Softball Complex. Uh, that's going to replace the lights, laser level the fields, and do various other improvements uh, to the facility. This is important for the people of Lee County, people of Lovington. Um, you've heard from Justin earlier. Thank you for your remarks. You also see the key club folks here. This is a community that is excited about this opportunity, and we're excited to work with them for it. Next is the 20,000 moving down to the bottom. That's for training purposes. You guys have a whole lot of new department heads, which is great because new leadership, and we want to give you the opportunity to fund some leadership training with that. What exactly that leadership training is, we're putting back in Dr. Martinez's hands because uh, I don't want to tell you what a police chief needs to know because I don't know what a police chief needs to know. Uh, but it's a great opportunity, we think, to uh, invest in your people because that is what makes Lee County great and makes love to great. So people that are coming here, sitting in these tables and willing to share their voices and their opinions and also the people who are leading your city every day. So $20,000 for that. And the last part is $180,000 to purchase new three new police cars. Uh, we know that the city has been working very hard trying to find money to invest in the infrastructure. We see new roads coming. We see new buildings coming. It's a lot of work. You guys have done a lot. And I'll tell you guys, I work with every city in Lee County. And Lovington is working harder than anyone else I know. And I think uh, I want to myself give Dr. Martinez a round of applause. I hope you are very excited to see new commissioners working alongside the older commissioner. That's not an old joke. You guys are young <laughs> and, and strong, but working alongside together. Uh, we're really excited about this new leadership. Now, I will tell you, the police cars, you guys have already found some funding for those, and that is something that the foundation typically we do not fund. Uh, we do not uh, give money for that type of thing because there's state funding out there, there's federal funding. But City of Lovington, you guys were in a rough spot, and uh, you guys are coming out of that rough spot, which is why we're willing to invest in that. But to be very clear, that's not something we typically do. But I hope that you see this, so this entire package, as a vote of confidence in you guys, in the direction that you're going, and appreciation for the work that you're doing. Now, I will say, there are strings attached. And here's our strings. This is my hometown, Lovington. This place means a lot to me. And the only string that we have attached is that you keep working for this community and you keep trying to make it better every day. That way we as a foundation can continue to work with you and continue investing in this community as we move forward. Thank you guys for your, your consideration. And I look forward to hearing how you vote on this. Thank you. Thank you. Now that Thank you. We appreciate the Lennox Foundation and their willingness to invest in Lovington and it just means a lot to us. So we really appreciate it. All right. We have
had discussion. Any commission have anything to say? Ask. Thank you. Uh, no, thank you. Okay. Uh, we have a motion and a second on the uh, approval of this grant. With no further discussion. Uh, Janet, roll call, please. Commissioner White? Yes. Commissioner Vogt? Yes. Commissioner Tavio? Yes. Commissioner Davis? Yes. Mayor Roberts? Absolutely, yes. All right. Floor is open for a uh, motion. How about we read that one? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not <laughs> 2022-072 approval to advertise ordinance 593 and ordinance of the city of Lovington repealing ordinance 581 dated March 23rd, 2020, which was the city of Lovington authorizing the execution of an intergovernmental agreement and project participation agreement accepting from the New Mexico Economic Development Department $750,000 for economic assistance to construct and equip a hemp manufacturing and processing facility in Lovington, Lee County, New Mexico. <laughs> okay, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, and Tracy, my question to you is, and I know the answer is, uh, the uh, this money was returned before July 1st or, yes. or June 30th. So um, basically this is just bookkeeping on this. Yes. Right. Any further discussion? If not, Shannon, we'll go for the vote, please. Commissioner Bolt? Yes. Commissioner Gandy? Yes. Commissioner Yes. Commissioner yes. Commissioner yes. Yes. Okay, so we're going for another. Mr. Mayor, I'd like resolution 2022-073 approval of Lodgers tax funding recommendation. Darren, who takes this? You? We need a second. I'm sorry. Did I, I didn't hear a second. Oh, sorry. Um, yes, the largest tax board did meet. Um, so this is our this is for funding for the first quarter. Let me come up this way. Can get this? Um, so for this for, first quarter, it will be from July to September. Um, this is just a financial report. Per the budget, it, um, we have to. We have to fund a certain amount to um, by NMSA requirements. So per the budget this year, thirty-two thousand dollars. This is the budget that was submitted. Eighty thousand dollars is what we're expected to get in water tax this year. Um, but we have to spend thirty-two thousand dollars for the year. Of course, there's some first quarter obligations. Um, the Main Street funding, Chamber funding, museum funding. We do a public safety transfer. Um, just for our services that we offer to these events, police, fire, street, all of those services. And then um, we have our July 4th fireworks come out of here. We also have fourth quarter remaining um, that we wanted to include in here because it's quite a bit. We're waiting on Main Street to submit their request for reimbursement. So um, there wasn't a, a whole lot that we have recommended to fund in this quarter, at least us a about $8,000 of what we requested or we recommended to give funding to each event. And um, after meeting with the event holders, this is their recommendation um, per event to fund. Like I said, totaling $8,000. And I know like the party in the park, the event already happened due to them having shift of um, directors. They usually put in the last quarter, but they were a little bit late, so they put in this quarter, but I know she did spend money on her advertising and um, everything else that she put in her packet. But um, if there's any questions, I can go back. That's more of a reimbursement. Yeah. Um, is that include fireworks too, or just? No, no, the, the fireworks are when the city pays, like, and that's, um, on that per, yeah, that's per year we will oh, they did go up. Yeah. But we, we divide it in quarter, that way it's not like right. every the whole year they have to come out with seven thousand. Go back to the second the first the other So you're saying the estimated funding available is eight thousand. And, and that's you're, and you're requesting eight thousand, so that would be the zero in the account. Is that is that no because we we per this one we anticipate to get about six per the budget, 
about sixteen thousand dollars in revenue this next quarter. So it bring the budget, it bring the um, account back up. That's so you see where the um, surplus deficit income budget. Is that an average of what you see for him? No, it, it's a little bit more, but the revenue on the budget was a little bit less. And it was just an estimate. We just took what the numbers that um, we were given. No, it, we usually it's a little bit more in revenue, but it was it was estimated a little bit lower. We didn't change anything. This is just what uh, previous management put, or previous finance put in. Our cash balance is right there as well. It's it's thirty one thousand, but like I mentioned, we have. Quite Thank a bit you, I can't see that. So, <laughs> no, sorry. Yeah, that's Our cash balance as of 627-2022 is $31,500. And our obligations total to $38,000 for this first quarter. $30,791. So we, we gave the lowest possible recommendation to fund. We didn't go any higher than what we thought. And if that, that's per NMSA requirement. That's bare minimum. Yeah, that's $32,000 into the four quarters. Any questions? Discussion? And then that's. Can you go back to the I'm oh, sorry. So, what are you referring to? Uh, estimated surplus defect uh, and, to, and then the minus. So, what are you, what are you guys referring to on the 21,000? Do you want me to read each one? Yeah, I'm just saying, what 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 does that pertain to? The estimated surplus deficit? Uh huh. That's 21,000. Um, is that what you're expecting to disperse? No. Uh, is that, that what you mean? <laughs> Or is it overall like that everything that, that you're including the 8,000? Here's your obligation. Just trying to read here. I'm just trying to see where the minus of the 21,000 were. That's, um, that, that's taking the revenue. Um, that we estimated from the obligation. That this is a formula that was used by um, former, but um, that's just I, that's <coughs> minusing the um, revenue that's ob or that's mm -hmm. estimated from the obligation that we will have in this quarter. So it at least in the twenty-one thousand mm -hmm. overall. Spinning search is what you're saying for this quarter would be 21,000. No, it's a 38. 38. 38. So I'm still trying to figure out where you get 20. Mm -hmm. What? Okay, so. What is the difference between the first quarter obligation and the minimum budgeted obligation? Like, you know, the 30, 38.7, and then you're just going to go ahead and get that. Um, the minimum budget obligation is what we recommend to give for events. Right. Right. But what is the 38 for? What it costs to run that? The 38 is how much it'd be, including with the 8,000. So all of the obligations that we have, which is Chamber, Main Street, Museum. Okay. The um, public safety transfer. If we go with the events of eight thousand, if you want to lower it, make it higher, change of course, okay. and then fireworks, and then the fifty thousand. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Did we clear up the twenty-one thousand mission video? I think, yeah, I think it's the surplus deficit based on the budget. I think that's just yeah. from the budget. It's because we're just trying to look at the date and not all this over to what they
Can I make a public comment? Yes, sir. To clear that up, it's you have $38,790 in expenses, but you have $16,902 in revenue estimated for that quarter. You subtract $38,790 from $16,902. That means you're going to be in the hole of $21,888. For that quarter. That's for that quarter. That's right. Yes. You're spending more than you're bringing in that quarter. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's right. Does that mean you hold eighty thousand here? That, like I said, that's for the budget. Now we might get more. We just took it from the budget, and we are following NMSA requirements for the budget. It's been forty percent. Okay. Sir. It doesn't add up. So what it is is the cash balance when we. Is the second quarter obligation the same as the first quarter? It's or would be. It, it will be except that fifteen thousand dollars. Now I just included that fifteen thousand dollars because, like I said, um, Main Street hasn't submitted their request for reimbursement from um, <clears throat> smoking on the plaza. Because <clears throat> like it's 12,000 that they got, they got another two, I believe, for another bit and chamber had gotten about a thousand. And I just, we just wanted to include it in there just so that way we are aware of our appointment. I mean, because the way I read this is your cash balance is 31, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you have your obligations and you have your estimated uh, revenue. Mm -hmm. So just four or five stones. Mm -hmm. Well, it comes down to uh, our but if you take the the obligation of twenty thirty eight thousand and you subtract uh, the fifteen thousand that was still remaining, then we have a twenty one thousand dollar ongoing obligation, and we're only bringing in effectively sixteen, nearly seventeen thousand. So we're going in the hole as a minimum four thousand a month. So, all uh, right. That's what I'm trying to figure out. So, our, so we have a cash balance, and you have your expenditures. Is what I'm saying is that plus the estimate of the sixteen thousand. Because let's say you have a cash balance of the thirty-two, plus you're going to bring in sixteen, so that adds up to forty-seven. So you're, we're just trying to see. Okay. And the the NMSA requirement is for the thirty-two thousand for the year. Yeah. So for the, for the budget. For the budget, right. Something they need to keep in mind on their disbursements is the fireworks will probably double this year because we're going to have them start setting them off so we don't have the liability of our firefighters being hurt. So that's probably going to double whatever you guys are accounting for quarterly year. Right now they're just count, accounting for eight thousand dollars worth. Yeah. So that um, that cost is going to probably double. Close to With outstanding obligation, and typically not my uh, opinion or favorable opinion to spend more than we take in. You know, if we don't have outstanding obligations, but we do, and we just adopted the, the budget that uh, will be funding uh, all of these different entities. So, uh, yeah, I agree. I, I knew that was going to happen. In fact, you they did it the last quarter. Yeah. Okay. So, so, is there any further discussion? Then I will call for a vote. Um, Shannon?
roll call vote on this particular item. Commissioner Tobio? No. Commissioner White? No. Commissioner Bo? No. Commissioner Gandy? No. No. I think we need to evaluate this after another quarter of the keyboard stamp. No, we have to disperse it for the year. We don't have to do it quarterly. And if we have an excess, then we can do that the next quarter. But right now, we don't see that we're going to have an excess. That's correct. That's obligated by the budget. By the four quarters. I understood reasons. Okay. All right. Board of Member. Motion. Make the motion. Make uh, that's uh, resolution 2022-074 approval of Ludington Senior Center Advisory Council bylaws. So, I have a motion and a second on the approval of uh, this resolution. Any discussion? And Dr. Mr. Mayor, members of the commission, one of the major changes to this uh, to the bylaws is adding two new members. The original council consisted of six, seven seniors, seven seniors. And what we would like to do is add two more members to make it a, a nine member board. And we would recommend that um, one member is from the community that advocates for the senior center. And then the other recommendation is to have a city commissioner appointed by the commission to be on this board. So that's the major change is adding two members. And then um, on the responsibilities, we added um, the board and the director can also advise the city manager or invite the city manager to attend. So that is the major change to the budget. And it is my recommendation to appoint a city commissioner to this board and a community member. Any questions for the discussion? Okay. Chairman, roll call vote, please. Mr. Bandy. I'm in the bay. <laughs> Give me a second. Okay. No. <laughs> So, Commissioner Bowles? Yes. Commissioner Blind? Yes. Commissioner Javier? Yes. Mayor Roberts? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm assuming Dr. Martinez, then we will uh, have a resolution to appoint. But we need to have a discussion, I guess, at some point, to who would be open to maybe volunteer Correct. for that. <laughs> well, no, I'm talking about from the from the uh, from the commission. Oh. Then it'll be a short discussion. <laughs> okay, what was up with your motion? Oh, just for consideration. We already voted. No, for the next oh, okay. one. Okay, okay. Well, th your discussion made it sound like yeah. having something on the start. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Just making sure. Uh, Mr. Reed, I'd like to make a motion for accounts payable. Okay. Uh, discussion, questions? Uh, it was a healthy accounts payable. You've been shopping. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, we just paid off at the end of the fiscal year some of the big ticket items in the factory, and I think we closed the contract with the Jackson Mill overlay. Mm -hmm. But the beginning of this fiscal year, we just paid the regulars. We haven't really paid anything other than that because it's just been the one week. I have a question, uh, not so much on the job. But where it was as far as candy cane water well service, uh, water COVID fund well distribution system, I guess, and a well drop. Where was that at? What was that for? What was being done? Mr. Mayor, members of the commission, how much, what was the total amount on that one? 11,419. 
Um, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Bolt, I'll have to do some research, but I know that was a specific well. Wow. <clears throat> yeah, that's I just I need to find out. Right, I'm not questioning the amount or anything, so I know it costs money, but I'm questioning what well it was because I didn't hear anything about it or know anything about it, so I'd like to know about it. Mr. Mayor, members of the commission, I will find out and get back to you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mayor and the commissioners, I'd just like to point out that the 21,000 for the fencing project is an ICIP capital outlay project for which we will be reimbursed by the state. Now, is that just on the crimes for the fence, or that's what I read on That is part of 78,000 for the total project, which involves constructing a fence to mechanize gates and repaving the parking lot. So you just needed a first draw for some materials. Oh, okay. So, so draw, I thought draw and such a nice draw for materials. Okay. okay. <coughs> Fire Chief, I'm assuming that the the striker invoice was for ambulance. Yes. Uh, yes. And my two biggest items were the Deco fire equipment for extrication tools. Those are battery powered tools to upgrade our extrication tools for cutting people out of cars. And that actually came out of the state fire fund. I have to, if I have money left in my state fire fund at the end of the year, it goes back to the state. So I have to use it. Now were there two tools that we got? Yes, sir. I got one was a uh, breader with extended jaws, extended mm -hmm. jaws, and then the other is a cutting tool. The cutters, and we also got battery packs to go with those. So, and um, oh. yes. Sorry. Yes. I realize that we're just one week into the new year, and uh, I'm assuming that uh, there will be uh, a budget versus expenditure type analysis done on a basis and um, that's one of the uh, items that hopefully we'll be able to present that you will be able to present to kind of show where we're at that would help us understand you know whether these are uh, out of what funds they come from and uh, basically where the department stands versus its budget is that something that you're uh, currently working on we are, um, we're in the process, Dr. Martinez and myself, we're meeting, we plan on meeting with each department every two months. Correct. And we're going to go over their budget as well to kind of help them stay within their budget that we've prepared for them. And we can set something up to to give to you commissioners and you the mayor so you can kind of see what's going on as well. Awesome. More information we have is easier. The less questions we have at this point, and would like to, you know, when it becomes relevant, the financial report was some of the things that uh, hopefully we were able to to update and be proactive. Yes, so, sir. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Can I borrow you for a second, Junior? A lot of people think. We lost this seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That was just right out of our pocket. We paid that. Can you kind of explain that that was like a helping hand paid back kind of savings account thing? So, would you repeat that question? The seven hundred fifty thousand for the hand place. Yes. A lot of people think that that came out of the city's money. Just here, take it back. I mean, you know what I mean. Like instead of it was held separately for that project and all that can you kind of elaborate on that so that yeah so we had a company called big dog industries that went through the state level uh, new mexico economic development corporation and they went in and, and uh, applied for funding right that was state level funding that was sent to the city of Lovington for guardianship of the fund till certain matrix for that project was met. Number one, obviously with the opening for business, number two, hiring, number three, revenue. And then they would complete their metrics, whatever the state um, <clears throat> provided that they need. Well, the money was sent over, the business was never established, they never come to town. So after two years, it was 
uh, the contract was voided. We got out of the agreement and the money was still in the possession of the city of Lovington. But that was not um, taxpayer money through our leader fund that was actually given to uh, the business through the state. So um, in in a sense, the money that was deposited here was ne was never ours. We we added it to our balance sheet to keep an uh, earmark of it and know and remind us that it was there in case the business did open and go through with what they promised the state they would do. And like I said, make a long story short, after two years of um, <clears throat> trying to get that business to Lovington, um, all negotiations failed and they terminated the contract. And so we then um, come to the city commission and requested that we send that money back. Um, then it was not done. We were contacted by the New Mexico EDC uh, department reps, and then they did a formal, I guess, request to, for, from the city to, to send it back. So I don't know if they sent that back yet, if it's, it's, it's done, it's gone. gone. It's gone. I had heard they were trying to negotiate payment or whatever, but so it is gone. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? No, thank you for clarifying. Thank you. All right. I have a motion and any further discussion? Right. Motion and, and a second to approve the accounts payable. Um, Shannon, uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Wiley? Yes. Commissioner Trujillo? Yes. Commissioner Bowe? Yes. Commissioner Gaines? Yes. Mayor Yes. Yes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes at this point. We'll be moving into closed session. We will reconvene, but then we will adjourn. So I appreciate your attendance and your comments today. So just to show you, they're talking about three hundred and ones and two years. If you get that point, it's a lot of energy. And the other thing is they even have to apply West Power Blue to get the money. And at the time, they had not even applied. But they have to fly to get a security on the late list, and it takes usually like up to two years just to get that project heard by the Southwest Park. The other part of it is there's a, what's called an interconnection. Let's run off most of the projects in the county. Uh, some of the projects, we have several in the county. One of there's one called the Tip Top Cellar that the county got. Actually approved uh, geo plans and stuff like that, but they uh, they uh, have to have an interconnection, which the usual cost might be about million to two million dollars for that. A lot of them they only they, they had not even applied or approached that. I'm just giving you some insight into this, and I know so. I'm just giving you a heads up. So if you do work on a lease with them, I would keep it a short term lease because you know, they're tying up your property. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Well, and that's uh, once we get to that. No, because we need to call. Uh, we need a motion. I really like. Uh, we haven't even made a motion. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I, I'm going to I, want to give, I just want to give you more inside information on that. Just to, I mean, you got to make decisions based on the information you have, and I want you to have no kind of other animals. They may, they may have a, uh, be in the queue now. 
It just at the beginning when they talk to y'all, they weren't being totally trying to be honest. Just give you a heads up. Okay. <laughs> they were from New York. They were from New York. Uh, they were what? <laughs> yeah, you better watch them. Yeah. They may not do it, but it's a huge undertaking. Uh, that, that project in Ross was 165 megawatts. It's in, uh, Excel did 140 of it, and then later on, Western Farmers Electric, for what I'm talking about, had come in and uh, set up purchase power group with uh, some other walkers in New Mexico. It was 525 megawatts, but it's 1,400 acres. Oh. And I don't know how much, how much is it out here that we have signed the lease on. It. So for them to get 300 megawatts, there's going to be grand if they can get it in 2,000 acres. It takes a lot of acres for it. Anyway, I'm just giving you a few heads up before you make decisions on a long term lease or something. I don't know if you want to get a long term Okay. No, thank you. Okay. You all have to. Commissioner King, would you make a motion? Sure. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion. We're in section 10-15-1 in NMSA 1978, subsection eight, 8 regarding the purchase, acquisition, or dis disposition of real property or water rights, the theater and youth center, and subsection H2 regarding limited personnel matters, treasurer. Second. I have a motion and section to uh, to move into closed safe, safe. session. Yep. Thank you. Uh, Shannon, roll call motion. Commissioner Vito. Yes. Commissioner Vogt. Yes. Commissioner White. Yes. Commissioner Gandy. Yes. Commissioner Rogers. Yes. Thank you, Patrick. <laughs>